sharing. And that's what we're looking for, something that can involve everybody in the philosophy majors. And we should be starting this back up and just amending the philosophy uh, constitution would be the best way to do that. Um, Vice President Costa. Okay. Uh, could you explain like the title of your plug? Well, amalgamated uh, just means uh, all inclusive. Okay. And so many of our classes um, you know, are very specific to a, a certain subject. And so often we get together and talk about it afterwards. And then it would inevitably stray to other subjects. And uh, that's what we feel like we're kind of lacking in our classes is a way to really comprehensive and cohesive and the things we were talking about, uh, we don't really have a platform to in class because they're specific to certain subjects. So that's really what we're looking for in particular. Do you uh, guys have, I'm oh, sorry, you No, go ahead. No, just uh, an open form of, you know, all inclusive of all types of philosophy and not just whatever the day calls for. Oh, okay. um, my next question was, do you guys have goals? Do you want to hold events or do you want to stay? Yeah, yeah, we'd like to, uh, even tonight right now, the Rhode Island College English Club is doing Waking Life and they have a, a video that's being played and then uh, one of the professors here, Dr. Feldstein, is giving a talk about it. He's writing a book about the same subject and uh, we'd like to do things like that. Maybe if uh, the budget or uh, circumstances allow, we could get more, maybe more high level or someone like that to give a uh, talk. And we might be able to include uh, Phi Sigma Tau in trying to get uh, different speakers here. Uh, the philosophy field is not terribly represented on campus. Uh, and yeah, we're hoping we can at least change that this year. I'm glad this was created because I know last fall, myself and uh, Representative Burke were in a political philosophy class and we would, when we would get down to doing the homework for it, it we found it taking hours because we'd just sit and talk and circle yeah. each other. And that, but it's like, it's not that that's a burden we, we enjoy doing it. Well, I enjoy it anyway. Uh, um, like tutoring want. would really be helpful too. Yeah. And just having a Facebook club page where you can throw out a problem you're having to a group of people who have had the same class or have similar interests. I wish you guys existed. Yeah, it would be infinitely helpful to a lot of people who have to take these classes and it's not their major. Because I'm by no means an abstract thinker. Like everything with me is analytical yeah. and has, like I can't I can't broaden my mind in that sense. But yeah. thank you. Just but, those type of things. Yeah. Good luck to you guys. Thank you. My question was for Secretary Auger. Mm -hmm. Um I, I apologize. I just I don't know the model constitution as well as maybe the rest of the executive council does. Um, in the advisor section of Article seven point uh, five. Um, it says that there's the option, it says a minimum of one advisor must be involved with the club at any given time, but there's no limit to the number of advisors. And I noticed that that's not a clause that's in any other constitution. Is um, there a reason for that? Well, I know that some clubs have two advisors. They, it's it's they literally just yeah. yeah. Oh, just because I feel like choice. it. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Um, and then my other question was in Article 8, Eligibility, um, Section 1, any full-time or part-time undergraduate, is there a reason we didn't put, like, student activity fee paying student, or do they not have to be a student? What Unless they're not a funded club. Um, usually they're undergrad. Yeah, yeah, usually if they're full time or part time undergrad student. So no, just, I used to put it in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. okay. So how would we how would we fit that in? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So is it just implied that there's student activity fee paying or um, it says it I believe in Article four point one point one. So, so you don't need to repeat it again? Because I remember it's there. Yeah, I don't believe so. Okay. I mean, we could put the language in. It just seemed a little redundant to me, and I think that's why I didn't put it in there. All right, that's fine. Um, okay. And no further discussion on this end, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Vice President Costa. Uh, this is actually something I should have said for every group that was up here, and I forgot to say it. Is once your constitution is passed, you have, I believe it's officially two meetings to request a budget. It's supposed to be the rule. Um, but the longer you wait in the year, the less money you're eligible to get. So just so you know, as soon as possible, come talk to me. I can help you figure out a budget. And it goes both for yourselves and the environmental club, and I'll get in touch with Glenn and explain. Oh, okay. <laughs> Apparently she told you, but I didn't know that. Sorry. Sorry.
Glad she knows. Okay, <laughs> any further discussion on the Constitution? No? Okay. Vice President. Just, just one more time. What are your names again? Uh, Jeffrey Gallon. Jeff. G A U L A N. Okay. And yours? All right, thank you. Any further discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor of approving this Constitution say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. Abstentions. Motion passes. We're going to move on to the thank updates. You guys. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. We're going to move on to updates of the month. I'm going to show you the update. We haven't had a problem meeting in three weeks. So a little rusty at times. B library office contract. We can both explain it, but I'll let Jordan go first. Okay, judge of things. Okay. So as you guys know, there was a little bit of a discrepancy over the library hours. Maybe some of you don't know. Um, but for the, what happens at the end of every semester generally is that the director of the J James P. Adam Library Adams Library asks student community government to kind of co-sponsor co-sponsor an event with student community government and basically that event is extended library hours and the library hours we advocated for was to have the library open 24 hours for the week of exams and the week before exams and unfortunately last spring there was a misunderstanding between both parties and the extended library hours were held without getting approval from the Finance Commission, which is required. So in order to save everyone and to make sure that everybody has a good and open discussion, we do have this contract here, which basically outlines what we agree to with student community government. And Kyla and I will be meeting with uh, Hetty at some point in order to have a discussion as to what will, exactly what will happen, talk to him about this. And there may or may not be changes, but we just wanted to let you know what would be going to that meeting and kind of what you'd be looking forward to because at the end of the semester or even shortly, we're probably going to be asking if it's a good idea to do it again. Actually, this, this is what we're asking. Yeah. If it's a good idea to do it again or if you guys would like to hold back and if you guys don't want to do it again, we still have to have a meeting to talk to Hetty about it regardless. So, I think maybe what we're asking is for you to take a look at this, and if there's anything you think we need to add, then please let us know now. Otherwise, this is how it's going to look when we go to heading. So. So you want a motion to approve? Um, I mean, I guess so. Sure. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. 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 This is an agreement for the year, both semesters. Is that what this is? Yes, it's um, until May 23rd. We're, we're agreeing to finding the hours for the fall semester and the spring semester. It says that there has to be information provided in order to submit a request. So it's saying that we're agreeing to ask for it, not that we're agreeing to take for it. Maybe I need to correct some of the language. However, I am fairly sure that it says Student Community Government Incorporated agrees to seek funding for extended library hours for the last two weeks of the semester. Um, an estimate of cost is due three weeks prior to the beginning of the extended hours. Treasurer is on the How about, um, just to clarify, Student Community Government Incorporated agrees to seek funding for extended library hours for the last two weeks of each semester. Excellent. And then an estimate of cost is due from the director of the James P. Adam Library. Just to, to make it clear who, who's doing what. Okay. You, you're, not, you're not acting until you get your estimate, right? Mm -hmm.
and I was actually just reading this instead. So just to clarify, previously, in previous years, we would pay for an entire week. We have paid, we have paid for an entire week. We have paid for portions of weeks. Um, originally, when we started extending library hours, we paid for a certain portion of hours. Then when we did the full 24 hours, we paid for the gap. Um, which is stated in here yep. and then we move that gap to go to a following week and expand beyond that um, so we paid for one week parts of a week and two weeks whole mm -hmm. and as of last I checked we paid for two weeks for the spring with finances approval on the October 3rd meeting so my question to you is that yes. we'll go ahead no, no go ahead. I just I was confirming that it's October there that we did that. Oh, okay. So um, has anyone, has any representation in the library like looked at this yet? No. I know you said no. We're just, so, we so have you, have, you don't know any feel at all of how? No, we're going to bring it to him and then if we need to make have you then. Have you emailed them with like this possible plan at all? No, not yet. All no, because right. I just got this from Jordan a couple weeks ago and we've had other things to do. And we scheduled an appointment. We already have any contact scheduling an appointment with him. Mm -hmm. So that would be why. We haven't actually like this isn't final like if they come back it's just more of a discussion about library hours and showing the precautions that we're taking in future endeavors to participate in co-sponsoring with the library because we are working with the college on this activity that benefits students and we want to make sure that if it's something we want to continue doing or we want the college to continue doing right now it's not in the college's budget to do it but it's something that we've advocated before with the college and it's been brought up at PECAC luncheons many a times. I think Dr. Penfield can vouch for me that it's been brought up. Um, and it's something that I know at the end of the year, as long as we mention it to BP here hard again, I'm pretty sure just nudge them in the right direction. And we'll continue to aggravate them until he puts it in. <laughs> um, and then my last question is, so as you just explained, we've seen the payment plan of how we do this five different ways to Sunday. How did you and President Pecky decide that this was the best plan to bring forth to the library? I can answer that question. Go for it. Um, just because in the past it's been so disjointed as far as communication and as far as who exactly is going to put the bill that I feel like, you know, any kind of contract that no, I agree. I agree. any kind of specifics will just aid the process. Is that what your question was? No, or? my question was, is, all right, so you know how it's, Jordan just explained the different ways we've paid for one week out of the two weeks we've mm -hmm. paid for the gap. How did you decide out of all those different ways that we've paid for before that this was the best possible option for us? Do you want to answer that? So we got an email from Dr. Payne over the course of the summer asking about the past due bill. We had a discussion. There was multiple e emails that, gone back, that had gone back and forth between us. There was a breakdown about the amount of hours that were being paid for. Um, and we were under the impression the whole time that we were only paying for specific hours. And we were concerned when we saw the hours that we actually were paying for, and we felt that it was unfair that we didn't know what we were paying for in advance. And that's something that probably should have been resolved the moment this first came up. It shouldn't have waited this long, but it happened to have waited this long because I don't know if anybody had actually ever asked. Have they ever asked? I don't. I know I never asked as a finance commission member, and I would have never thought to ask. But until it's kind of thrown in your lap, that's when you break it down a certain way. And the library used to extend their hours anyways until midnight during exam weeks. So we felt comfortable paying from midnight to when they would normally open. And so that's where we broke it down. And we said two weeks because not everybody is just studying during the week of exams. People are also studying the week before exams, I hope. Procrastinators. Um, well, procrastinators do unite, but those who are proactive and want to do it the week before can study the week before. And we want to give them the opportunity to write papers with resources in the library the week before, no matter what time of day it is. Because I know sometimes if I was at a dorm room or if I was doing work elsewhere, I would come and escape to the library at 3 a.m. and write a paper. So from personal experience, working on the Finance Commission, the data that was provided over the summer, and just the benefit of the overall student community, we felt it was necessary to a lot specific hours that we're willing to pay for that are beyond what the library normally pays or covers. And also, we really feel that the two weeks is what's most beneficial because it helps everybody. So, yeah. Thanks, gals. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Carson. So, will you kind of just answer my question, um, Treasurer Days, but in like all set aside with all of the logistics of it and all that, this is, has this proved successful in the past? 
library has become really Oh, yeah. I can Dr. Kane has the report. Where you sleep at night? <laughs> it, it, no, we're out there all night. It, it's really intense. The first year that we did it when I I can honestly tell you for a fact, the first year that we approved it, um, students were so happy that they had that 24 hour space. And that was my sophomore year here on campus. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna pretend it's a sophomore year. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so it was a while ago, <laughs> but people like that I knew that were graduating, especially seniors, really appreciated that time. And then when we moved up two weeks, people were like, people sent Dr. Kane thank you emails for all the things that we had been doing. We even got a complaint about how, about the student workers, and we were like, you know what? Power to the student workers, and we sent a thank you letter to the student workers. And so it's proven that a lot of people like this, and a lot of people enjoyed it. Um, Dr. Kane has all the specific data, and if you'd like that, I can request it from him and bring it to the next parliament meeting so everybody can take a look at it. Um, but I do be very specific data on it that Hedy Benatcha has provided to Dr. Kane to show that it has been working. Yeah, I, I took it as it's been successful, so yeah. I was just curious. Okay. I, I, I don't think this is I've never been there, so I'm just curious to see. Totally. Yeah. Well, the great level of success of the student government, basically. Uh, oh, so I, I just want to say thank you for extending the library hours on the things. <laughs> now, at the end of the semester, I don't have to go to PC anymore like I do now until 2 a.m. to work on stuff. Yeah, I'll check it. the <laughs> Yeah, just touching Shannon's questions. Like, it's the only time I ever actually go to the library because there's nothing else to do with this. <laughs> 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 like, that's the place you're I just have a question. I want to make sure I'm following this right. So we are funding the library if we pass this, right? But what if the library presents us with a thing we don't like? Can we opt out? I'm, we're we're going to ask. Not, the the not, contract is asking finance. It's, it's okay. giving the permission to ask finance. It says oh. we'll seek funding. It doesn't guarantee that we will provide funding, though. Okay. Seeking, seeking, yeah. Seeking funds is just asking, I'm going to request for it, and if I don't get it, yeah, I definitely think it's a good cause. I just want to make sure our hands are tied when the time comes. We no, and it. it's something that if you guys don't vote to approve tonight, then we're not going to do it. So, I mean, I think it's a really good thing, yeah. and I know everybody else in the room thinks it's a good thing, but I can understand. There, there are reasons I can say that I would understand if people voted no, but I personally feel that this is beneficial to the entire student population, and if you vote no, I mean, that's your personal opinion. And I don't know why this is. Okay. Any further discussion on this contract? Well, uh, no further discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those say no. Extensions, which are passed. Hopefully, we'll have extended library hours. Administrative update? No, I didn't say. Here comes the discussion. No, we should have just hit that T-Bass point. No, I wanted them separately for a reason. Okay, we're both in discussion. So, you already have the numbers in front of you. I will try and make this as brief as possible, but I just want to get your feedback um, because the meeting that I approached you, the very first meeting, and asked for your consent in order to hire Group Boston, it was unanimous. Um, so I just kind of want to touch on a couple things that I think are germane to this discussion. Um, and I usually don't, I try not to go on a tangent when I speak because I know that everybody else has somewhere else to be. I appreciate the time you spent here, but I just want to make a couple points. Um, I read this article in the Anchor last week and it's opinion editorial, which is totally fine. Everybody's allowed to have an opinion. Um, and the opinion of this particular person was that group Boston was a waste of money. Um, now obviously I feel very differently. Um, and I was kind of, you know, thinking about it over the past couple weeks, letting myself mull it over. Um, and I just think it's, it's very germane to the discussion of apathy on campus because it was mentioned in the editorial. Um, and the editorial says that it's, you know, paying this, this $20,000 sum of money was not the best way that student resources could be used and it was not the best way to promote, you know, participation on campus. Um, I would say there are 900 students that disagree with that opinion. Um, but I'll let the numbers speak for themselves. I just want to I just want to say that sometimes I feel like we are we are the student leaders on campus, and we are the student leaders on campus because we are some of the most proactive people on campus. 
it's okay not to be involved, and it's great to be involved. But what I've been seeing in the past couple years is that we've been operating separately as student organizations from each other. And that's something that I would like to see change during my administration. Um, I feel like, you know, we're all connected because, you know, student government's the big, the big player that, you know, gives everybody their budgets, but that's not the only thing I want to be, at least in my administration. I would like to work cooperatively with other student organizations, and I would like student, other student organizations to want to work cooperatively with me. Um, so I think that too often, we as student leaders, you know, we do wear a lot of hats. Like I said in my announcements, my entire executive council had a job for homecoming. They each planned an event for a day. That was a lot of me to ask of them, and they could have told me no. But we choose to take on these responsibilities as student leaders because we have a, a vested interest in the school. At least I know that I do. I love this school. I love everything about it. Every decision I've made has just reinforced that initial decision that I chose as a freshman to come to Rhode Island College. And I couldn't be more proud of the work I've done, the work everybody else around me has done in both my school. But I think that too often, that's what we get caught up in. And that we get caught up in, what, well, what am I doing? Well, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Why aren't people showing up to my event? And too often, we blame that on those people that aren't showing up. But we never ask ourselves the questions, well, why aren't they showing up? Is there something else that I can do? Is there something I could be working on with somebody else? Could I collaborate with another group on campus and bring all these people in? Um, I just feel like that we need to be more introspective when we start evaluating these events. And I, I, I do it myself. I take a lot of things really personally. Um, if people disagree with me, I take it personally because I'm that invested in my goal that it, it's, become, you know, it's become me. So I just really want to encourage everybody to take a, take a step back and realize that we're not just here for us. We are all sitting around this body because 50 people each signed our petition, at least, and 50 people want to see each of us here right now. And we are doing them a disservice if we don't think about them every once in a while, at least. We should be thinking about them all the time because we are their, we are their voice on this body. But I feel like lately it's just gotten, you know, that message has been missed. And I'm sorry, I have notes. I was up until 1 a.m. I never sleep. Um, <laughs> I think that we need to work, we need to work together better. And this author's opinion isn't incorrect in saying, you know, maybe it wasn't the best way to promote, you know, togetherness and unity. And maybe there were people who excluded from this event. He mentions older students, but I mean, not to not to point anybody out, but Representative Sanchez was there, and he's not he's not 20. You know, he was there with the rest of us having a great time. So if he can do it, there's no reason that anybody else who's his age or around his age could not go to that event. Nobody was excluded from the event. Um, and the author also mentioned something about um, expanding the resident population. Um, I did ask Teresa Brown when I read this article about how many rooms were filled on campus because I thought that was pertinent to this discussion as well. Um, we obviously don't have a huge resident population. We're, what, 90% commuter? There's nothing wrong with that. I feel like people think that there's something wrong with that. We're not URI, we're not Bryant, we're not PC, and it's for a reason. We have to take ownership and we have to take pride in the campus that we are and work with what we've got. Um, the suggestion, you know, was to expand residency, expand, you know, essentially creating a new residence hall in years to come. That's a wonderful idea. But to get new halls, students had to be proactive themselves and camp out on President Nazarian's front lawn and say, this is what we want. And as much as we do, all the hats that we wear, we can only do so much. We have to help these students take pride in their school, and I think that's part of our job. So in my eyes, and thank you, Mr. Speaker, for congratulating my executive board. You were definitely a part of this effort on you know, helping this event be passed and approved. We already had several students. I had a few phone calls last week asking me when it was going to happen again. So there's definitely an interest in this, and I would be really interested to hear in your thoughts as a body, but that's just all I want to say. So thank you for everybody for, you know, letting me come to you with a crazy idea and, and believing in me and approving it and then showing up. That's wonderful. So I would really like to see us continue that progress and that kind of work and that kind of change because that's how we're going to leave this campus better than when we got it. So that's all I have to say. So I'm just going to add to some of President Peggy's sentiments. Um, for numbers sake, because I know we already did a report, but if we only had 800 attendees, that would be $25.56 a person, and for an event that grand, that's a really nice price. 
Um, those tickets usually go for $30, $40 a piece. And we were really hoping to sell something like this out. And with the assistance from Mr. Paolucci, Kate Brazina, um, from the, the director of alumni relations, um, Dr. King, Dr. Penfield were there. <laughs> everybody, everybody has been kind of a guiding force behind this. And though this may not be your kind of event, this was a really well attended event, in all honesty, because I've gone and bring people out for the kind of numbers that they have, what they I've gone off about the concert multiple times, how it's not cost effective, but was the event good? Yes. But cost effective was it? This was another event that I can honestly say I wouldn't own up to it being a cost effective event. Next year, I'm hoping that if it comes back, which fingers crossed it does, and that the homecoming committee decides to give that to student government again, or if student government decides to do it again anyways, that they have the guidance there of Mr. Paoluji, who really kind of supported us the whole time. So I have to say thank you in front of everyone, first <laughs> off. But the other thing is, I'm not the kind of person who likes that stuff, but I had an awesome time. Um, Kyla and I were straight up exhausted by the oh end of it. Gosh. We're like leaning over the rails. Um, and we were so tired, and I couldn't hear out of my ears for days. And <laughs> the PC students <laughs> that we invited to get the experience, because it's our right to bring people, like we were invited to go to JWU. Um, the PC students had a really great time, and now we have the opportunity to go to Group Boston again if we want. The PC we're already scheduling a wrap-up meeting with Bobby, who is the CEO of Group Boston, and he was ecstatic from the sheer number of people that we got. And it's completely different knowing them in a business perspective and then knowing them as DJs. And you get a completely different vibe from the experience working with them on a professional level, but also getting to experience the event. Um, I agree that maybe this wasn't the most widely appealing event, but if you guys want to change that, join the homecoming committee for the 2013 year, or join Parliament, and you will get that info right ahead. Um, everyone on the homecoming committee that was, and these are adults that came to the homecoming event, were sincerely surprised and amazed by the sheer number of people we had. They're like, how's it going? And Kyla and I are like, it's great. Um, Dr. Penfield show, showed up, and I wasn't expecting to see you, I'm going to be totally honest. <laughs> and, then I, I and then I found out that he was in the back taking pictures with people like Marcy and Kyla and Hillary and Katie, and they, even our administrators were supportive of our event. Um, this isn't, some, we're not going to always please everyone, and that's something that I have to emphasize, because no matter what you do, how you do it, somebody's always going to be upset. That's the college, that's life. But I think for our first venture and working on something that's more student-centric, um, I asked Mark how many people went to Kanye West when he was here, and he said 2,000 people. So the fact that for an event like Groove Boston, to bring in half that, if not a little less. Kanye was open to the public, I believe, correct? Right? Right. For 899 Rick students to purchase tickets, for themselves and a guest, that's amazing. I don't think I can emphasize the kind of culture that, as much as it may not be an academic event, it may not be what everybody dreams of as, oh, student government sanction. It was a really great event to show that this campus has more than people are willing to give it. And I think that people like myself, Kyla, Gianna, Katie, Hillary, even Mary who worked on it. Travis, even though he didn't get to go, he kept on checking in with us, seeing how the event was going. Ryan Betancourt was supportive of it. Everybody, Sam Allen went and set up. We got Marcy, president of programming. Shannon's the treasurer of programming. We all put our blood, sweat, and tears into this. And believe me, I don't think that if it wasn't worth it, we wouldn't be so proud of it now, and I think that I'm hoping that Mr. Paolucci will echo my sentiments and say that this was a really good event, and the fact that we only had three incidents and only two people were removed and one person due to their own mis- whatever, uh, mismanagement was taken off in an ambulance. For three events out of 800 and something students, for three students to be removed, that's really 
smallest amount of population that we could probably have. I mean, zero would be great, but that's unrealistic. And they didn't, it was nothing that was in our control that we could have done to make the situation better. So I think that for the event we put on, the control we had of the situation, and the environment that we provided, I think that this was a really successful event. And you don't hear me say too many happy things about events that spend lots of money. So the fact that I'm supportive of this is something completely different. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing what the Student Entertainment Commission has to offer because I think kids are now amped up for bigger events happening here on campus. That's what I have to say. So take a Um, I have a lot to say. <laughs> um, so the first thing I feel really strongly about this topic, and it is that to me, like the any articles comes at me, they do, to be honest. Um, how could, my question is that, it's a rhetorical question, um, but how can we diminish student apathy without spending money to hold events which are meant to keep students occupied and meant to keep them involved and meant to get them participated? How are we supposed to get the students active, um, participated without spending any money on events for them? So that's the only question that I have in regards to this piece anchor article. Um, that's the only thing I'm going to say. Um, I had a question for Dr. Penfield and Mr. Paleogy. You guys were at the event. How did you think the event went? I know you had a grand old time. You were in plenty of pictures. Well, I've already indicated that I thought that it was the combination of effort on the part of uh, your executive group Mark Pellucci and his team here, security, uh, security I thought really stepped up to the plate and they were very helpful throughout the event. And of course, the all, Mr. Tencher and his crew that uh, assisted throughout the process. Uh, so I thought that it was an exceptional team effort to make the event uh, uh, successful. And it clearly was successful and it was also an opportunity to test the new recreation center in terms of the soundproofing, and there was a lot of dollars invested in soundproofing that facility. Uh, I actually drove over into the neighborhood at about quarter of 10 and sat on the two streets that dead end into the campus and listened to, uh, because I knew that the neighbors, uh, if there was noise, and there, and there was a meeting the following Tuesday about uh, noise problems, not from that event, but noise problems generally from the rec center. Uh, uh, I, I, the, when I sat there with my windows down, uh, because of the techno music, you had that low whoop, 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 and I said, oh, if they're not used to this noise at 10 o'clock at night, their brains are going to click on and they're going to say, what is that, that noise that's going on? Sort of like the earthquake last night, I guess it happens. People can notice uh, because you're, you're not used to it. When we met with them the following uh, Tuesday night, uh, their concern was not for the concert. Uh, they, they had other concerns about the HVAC equipment on the roof and the noise emanating there, and so we spent the bulk of the time talking about that. And there were probably about 15 neighborhood people who attended this meeting. Uh, and then when it, at the end, the question was raised about uh, the concert, and I explained how it came about. Uh, and, all, and then several of them said, well, listen, this is a college campus and we really you know, value living next door to a college campus and so we understand that there are going to be events like this. Uh, but, uh, you know, and they did hear that noise I was talking about, and, and, uh, but in the end they said, uh, you know, we understand there will be periodic events where there will be noise. It will be nice if you sort of as a courtesy, let us know that it was going to happen. So if somebody had something going on, we could make alternate plans. Uh, and, and they also expressed appreciation for the fact that the event did not go on until 2 a.m. in the morning. And uh, uh, you know, they said if it had gone on until 2 a.m., they probably would have been a little more concerned. Uh, and so they, they simply said, we, we appreciate the fact that you know, the students understood and were sensitive about the fact that it's a Thursday night uh, and, and you know, we've got kids that are going to have to get up and go to school in the morning, we've got to get up and go to work 
And so we appreciate the kind of sensitivity that occurred. So that was the feedback on that, uh, that event. Thank you. But I thought you all did a good job. Everybody working together did a good job. Thank you. Um, and the... You need to give Mr. Pelucci an opportunity. He's, on He's the also on the list. On the list. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is that? There, I felt like the event I heard students talking about it the day of in Dolphin. Oh, you going to Boston? You going to Boston? Yeah, I heard it all day. Um, and the, I thought that was great. Um, I thought that we did all that we possibly could with the advertisement and spam Facebook and everything. I think we did great. Um, one issue that I believe was talked about in the article was just the fact that people couldn't go outside and come back in. But obviously, like, yeah, it was a safety issue, so I understand that. Um, but it was, it did get hot. That's the only problem. It got hot, but I dealt with it. I dealt with it. Other tons of other students dealt with it. So yeah. <laughs> um, and a little advice: don't crowd surf. Don't do it. <laughs> don't don't do it. It's such a bad idea. <laughs> you'll get the bundle from me. Yeah. yeah. Or you'll get. Uh, so, yeah, uh, just don't crowd there. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Secretary Augustine. Vice President Costa? Uh, how many people are on the list behind me? Mark. Just one more. Um, mine's kind of a general why statement regarding the entire situation. So, can I do call ahead seating to issues of Parliament members? Yeah, she's just going to make sure you're Yes. Well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Mark, would you? Uh, I, I think some, some of us were preaching to the choir because we're all somehow involved in, in the event, but I think you got to start at the very beginning. Um, this was presented uh, to student government, the idea of doing this event back in the summertime when you don't allocate money. And you can't advertise an event until you have money. And so you didn't get the money until the second week of school. And you basically had a couple of weeks, two weeks, to advertise an event. We kind of capped it. We needed a number back in the summer, and we said a thousand, just because it was a number. And our goal was to have a thousand people. So we were pretty, pretty much were close to that goal, given that you had two weeks to advertise, and you did an awesome job. I think it's not about putting a sign or chalking the mall. It's social media. I saw it work. And everybody, you know, I sat downstairs and watched kids buy tickets and said, hey, we did you find out about this? And it was a friend or, or a conversation they had with a friend or it was on Facebook. And it wasn't, I saw this post or, you know, somebody handed me a flyer. It was a, a, either they talked to a friend, so it was word of mouth through social media. And I think in two weeks, it was like a Herculean effort to get that word out. And I think. The, the, the plan should be to set some, some money aside so you're not scrambling around in August to sign a contract. Dr. Kane signed the contract like two days before the event. Uh, you know, so you're not doing those things. So there's a follow-up meeting for homecoming to talk about some of these things on Wednesday. I would hope that somebody from your group will be there to say what is the plan for homecoming next year so we can plan before we all go away for some reason though some of us don't. Too, but we don't. Uh, we're still here. But I think that's where the you know the the effort starts. The effort starts before you guys leave in May. So we're not sitting here in August trying to plan an event, spending twenty thousand dollars. And we we believe that more than a thousand students can go to that event. If it's that event or something along that line, then you know we'll, is what the students want. This when I saw it, I said I think this is what the students want. I think this is going to be a big hit. And you know, it's not real. It's un it's unrealistic to say we're going to get a thousand, we're going to get two thousand people because if they if they're touring again next year and that and that idea comes about, uh, I think it will work. Uh, but again, it's starting it's planning early. We did plan this really last minute, and you know, I, I was looking at you to plan an event, and it's it's like how McDonald's works. It's <laughs> it's a product, it's a price, it's the people that sell it, it's a building that they sell it in, and how they market it. If you look at the hamburger, McDonald's sold millions of them. Why? Because they have all of those things in place. So if you go along with that concept, you have, you know, it's Groove Boston's your product. You put it at the right price. It's affordable to the students at five dollars. 
you had a great facility and you know kudos to the athletic department a lot of those people don't do those kind of events in that facility you know you got Andy who mows the lawn for you know the soccer field is you know working the event so all of those people kind of you know those are the, the, the personnel that, that you know that we rely on to put on an event and then you market it and you guys you know did that and so you had all those five elements and that's why it was successful I think just the timing of it has to be better um, and it kind of got, it got thrown on you now the last part is the thing that you talked about at the very beginning that nobody touched on you're upset about the anchor article and I read it I folded it up I put it away <laughs> But none of you respond. There was no rebuttal. Nobody wrote a letter. <laughs> and it wasn't no. there? No. no. Ah, I why? You know, it, it's like if you're, if you're this upset about it, I'm not going to write an article up to the anchor to say, you know, what I thought about it and what happened. It's a student paper. Your response, you know, it should have been immediate to them. If it, you know, it obviously it touched a nerve with you guys. and. And so just let it go, let them get away with it. So that's my comments. <laughs> Hillary left. So I just want to respond. Oh, Representative Kerr. Oh, we are. Representative Kerr. Um, there was a letter written. It will be published in this coming week's paper. So there is a bottle of a type that will be there. I was just going to say that from knowing the people in the anchor, there was a response. Um, but I was also told that there was quite the response from their own staff. Just from rumors, there was a response from their staff about the articles. Um, and that one article reported one thing while another said another, one, another thing. So um, I can't say that people didn't react to it. But I think people, at least from our perspective, at, from my perspective, being an officer up here, um, because I do have a working relationship with the newspaper, I'm not going to get into an argument with them over something that I know doesn't need to be an argument at the end of the day. So. No further discussion on this topic with Boston. I know we kind of went along with this, but obviously it's a very important um, discussion topic about student the government's future. So, with no further discussion, we're we'll going to go on to updates and remarks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have no report for update. I actually have a question. Can I get one of those magnetic uh, buttons? Yeah, I have one. There are. There are. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I think I have stickers and bumper stickers. I don't know if I have magnetic ones. Oh, it's not magnetic. You don't want it. No, I have not. I just assumed because. RDW at the same time. Yeah, no, I didn't. Um, did you have any? Um, just briefly, um, a good thing for um, Rick's students, I think. Uh, during university week, um, Professor uh, Trelkeld uh, and um, Harry Rossi, who's the Director of Disability Services, and myself did literacy training on higher ed strategies for all students. But particularly, our, uh, that research shows a really helpful work. At risk learners at Rick, whether it's English as second language, if they might have a disability, or maybe not as sophisticated with educational tools. It was fairly successful, such that the Department of Nursing uh, has taken on and wants their entire faculty um, trained in literacy strategies and instruction, which is a good outcome for you know a small event that takes place at diversity week. Um, Redondo College, um, I'm working as one of the co-chairs, uh, is uh, in serving as a faculty mentor on a subcommittee that is looking at changing business for how schools are structured within the structures they have to be more accommodating and more accessible for students coming out of foster care. So that's gotten underway and um, with representatives from the private colleges from Rhode Island. Uh, as well as state agencies, Rhode Island College, and a, a secondary piece. But Rhode Island College is good. It's going to be hub of what the design will be. Um, the third thing is that under council, I hadn't heard it mentioned, and I realized I was away, but as far as academic discipline, 
uh, one of the things that had gone through the council was to, to break up um, academic disciplinary issues from other disciplinary issues, and that's underway. Um, where faculty mentors are assigned to students with academic issues to mentor for a full year. And I'm one of the people that is taking on that responsibility. But I think it's a nice change here because in many cases, people who find themselves in a disciplinary issue academically don't often necessarily know how they got there. Um, not everyone is as familiar with things that maybe people would have known in my day uh, when it constitutes plagiarism in some cases. So anyway, it's um, a rewarding experience, but I think it's a nice move uh, that faculty are going to be in touch with students so that they're getting better outcomes, more success, not just saying, oh, it's punishment, but showing them how to do it the right way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The only thing I've got to say is that for homecoming, the follow-up, if you're not going to be there, I can report on it for that. Wednesday at noon time, that's the Well, we're already meeting with Kate on Tuesday morning. Supposedly, I don't think it's confirmed yet. What? Well, can you not go, Tyler? We'll talk about it after. There you go. Thank you. It was going to I may uh, need some help from Dr. Kenfield on this, but the President Cariolo is interested in initiating a shuttle uh, service on campus to sort of uh, help students from the, in particular from the uh, remote parking lots and get around uh, quickly to their, from their cars to their academic buildings. Um, I think we're sort of looking at a launch date maybe sometime in November, but a lot of work needs to be done. And we want to work with student government. I think she said something to you, or somebody said something to you. Very briefly. And, uh, <laughs> we want to work with student government to talk a little bit about roots and what might make sense and be most helpful for, for students. Okay. So we'll do that in some in the near future. Okay. Anything else you can add to that? Or? No, that's right. That's okay. Oh, treasure day. Um, so since you brought up a shuttle, I'm going to ask about the uh, bus stop. Bus shelter. When is that going to be done? In honor of Eric Buckley. Um, <laughs> do we have an idea? When, I know I saw professionals in suits out there looking at it this morning. So I'm assuming that means that there's going to be a. There's going um, to be a dedication, a ribbon cutting kind of ceremony. I think it may. It, I know it's early November. Mm -hmm. It's either November 4th or 14th, but I don't have a calendar here to know whether those are Sundays or. Mm -hmm. Or this was not the fourth. Yeah. What's the fourteenth day? The fourteenth day. Well, the Wednesday. It may be the fourteenth day. Anyway, okay. approximately that night, and uh, uh, Aaron Buckley has already been communicated with because, of course, he thought it was sometime in October and got hours off of his work new work schedule to attend and showed up for it. Change, but uh, my understanding is that, that the bus shelter itself will be fully completed by that time. And my assumption is that that fencing that you see around there will have been removed. And all of that will be a nice, uh, that uh, that fun feel of occasion. You so, are, I will be invited. So, you just brought up a really good transportation issue, so I just felt that. Appointments, resignations, and vacancies, President. Sure, I have, I have quite a few. Um, I just ask that they be accepted with unanimous consent. Um, I'd like to officially hire Kristen Welch as our communications director. Um, I'd like to appoint Kimberly Plant and Chris Susie to the Student Life Committee. Um, I would like to appoint Tyler Dean and Jack Adamo to the Finance Commission. Um, I would like to also appoint Caitlin Burke and Andrew Augustus to the Public Relations Committee. Um, what else do I have? And actually, I would also like to appoint our second faculty representative, um, Dr. Namita Sar Sarawadi, as our second faculty representative. Oh, and might I add that we haven't had two faculty reps on Parliament for six years. So, good work, guys. Is, that's all. Is all of those appointments accepted or unanimous consent? No objection. This is a part number. Please raise your hand. Okay, so we have three. 
So, Treasure Day. So, we were talking earlier about addressing issues with our constituencies, and I had a constituent bring an issue up to me today. Um, there is a Green Dependent Scholarship program being advertised on the RIC main page, and these were the requirements, or these were the um, and these were the details that were listed on the page, and I was asked to read their email out loud in Parliament. Um, it's one thousand dollars for Rick's, uh, ten thousand dollars for a Rick sophomore, two point five GPA. A financial need has to be shown for it. There's an essay portion where you have to write a five hundred word essay, I believe, on sustainability and green issues. Um, preference will be given to students of color. Students in any major can apply, and the deadline is October nineteenth. Um, really uncomfortable reading this. But the email was written, this is the message that I am greeted by when I follow the link posted on the home page of, Rick, of Rhode Island College website, www.rick.edu. The scholarship opportunity provided by National Grid for Rick Software was one which I was very interested in. Now I feel as if, because I am not colored, I will not be selected for this opportunity and cannot justify applying for such an opportunity. This is extremely overt discrimination based on color, and I am offended. Um, now, my question to the administration was, due to Title VII, regardless, passed in 1964, what, is that sentence necessary? I uh, guess the preference will be given to students of color, was the sentence that was off-putting to some other students. So I was just asking what you would have to say on that matter, because he asked me to ask. Because I don't really know how to approach the situation on my own. I think he's the biggest problem, Okay, because I, I think that it could be detrimental to those who are applying. The scholarship is offered by National, National Grid. National Grid, and it has to do with their foundation. Um, but I don't think that, <laughs> I mean, for me, it's not something that I can apply for. So it doesn't affect whether or not I would be applying. But because of Title VII from the Civil Rights Act of 1964, there's absolutely no need for it to be written because we do have affirmative action. So it wouldn't, well, it's already in place that there are certain social stratifications in order to make sure that nobody's given preference on the basis of race. Um, and I don't feel like stating something like that when applying for a scholarship is going to um, welcome students to applying. And I think that's what the sentiment was in my constituent. So something that maybe either you, Dr. Kane, or you, Dr. Penfield, could look into for me. You just send us the email. I can send you the email. I'll actually forward it to you both right now. We probably consult with our attorney, right? Or some advice. Our attorney or your attorney? Our, That's our what attorney. I thought. Yeah. <laughs> no. Does that conclude your That attorney? concludes my concern. Thank you. Uh, Rosa, yes. I'm just letting everyone know we're having mozzarella sticks and chicken fingers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so so it's kind of building off of the group Boston discussion. I'm not going to talk about group Boston, but what I have to say is this, and I think sometimes we forget this. As as a microcosm of the real world of real world politics as student leaders here in student parliament, I think sometimes we think that in order to to classify a successful event or a successful year or a successful initiative, we need to have affected all students. And it's my belief that something is successful if we've changed the attitude or affected positively a student, or just one student. Because I think, I think we give ourselves this huge task of, I mean, of course we want to try and reach every student every year, but it's just not possible with a campus like this size. So I think from now on in our minds, we need to remember, obviously as Treasurer Dave said, you can't please everyone, but at the end of the day, it's about making positive change in at least you know, one student's life and making their experience here 
positive one, e even if it's just for one night or if it's for an entire school year. So I think that's something that we need to remember going forward. Also, one thing I didn't mention in my announcements, um, the PR committee is in the process of uh, planning the town hall meeting. Um, and we set that date for November 4th. And when you look at your calendar, you're going to see it's a Sunday night. And the reason we did that is because the theme is going to be um, resident life. And one of our the members of the committee, who is a resident student, suggested that doing it on a Sunday night because that's when all the students are back on campus if they leave the weekend. So by doing it then, um, we figured that we'll get a bigger turnout from residents because during the week, usually we, we don't get the best attendance. So, I mean, we're gonna try it out on a Sunday night, see how well it does. We're gonna do the usual Weber Lounge, have refreshments in the back. Um, and we're gonna do, uh, now that we have Kristen Welch hired as our communications director, she's a, a senior graphic design major here at RIC. Um, she works at FM Global doing graphic design, so she's awesome with graphics. And she's already got the graphic for this in the works, and all of my committee has really stepped up and agreed to go and um, pass out flyers to residents as they walk the crosswalk back to um, their dorms. So keep this in mind, promote this November 4th, 7 p.m. in the Weber Mall Lounge. Let all of your resident friends know. Uh, thank you. And motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn by Vice President Costa, second by Jim Hopper. All those favor of the drug, the drug say hi. Hi. All say no, abstention. If you have a drug, please, everyone, stay seated for roll call. And Vice President Costa, is this still doing pictures? No. No, oh, no, no. Next week, because it's. Here. Hillary Costa. Here. Gianna Otter. Here. Jordan Day. Here. Travis.